Um, hello everyone, this is Lexicon Architect coming at you with a, another budget commander list. And today we're going to be playing Azorius and we're doing a theme called Dungeons and Initiative. So let's get into it. So our commander is three mana um, and his name is Hama Pashar Ruin Seeker. Um, and basically it has an ability that says whenever abilities of dungeons you own trigger an additional time. So our commander allows us to speed run through um, the three dungeons that are created when we venture into the dungeon or also if we take the initiative. So later in the video we're going to look at the dungeon cards and what they do and decide on which ones we want to speed run through. So first of all, we have um, Ara Kokra Sneak. When the ETBs, we uh, take the initiative. Uh, Brago allows us to uh, exile any number of target non-land permanents and then return them to the battlefield. So if we deal combat damage with this, because it is a flyer we may be able to get through on one of our opponents, we can essentially blink all of our creatures that have an ETB ability when they enter the battlefield, we take the initiative or we venture into the dungeon. Um, the cloister, the cloister gargo uh, gargoyle allows us to venture into the dungeon when the ETBs, and then as long as we completed a dungeon, it gets plus three, um, <coughs> plus zero and has flying, becomes a three, four. We play the cloud blazer just so we can gain two life and draw two cards. So if we blink this, we'll gain the two life and draw two cards. We play Displacer Beats because when it enters the battlefield, we can venture into the dungeon. And then for four mana, we can return it to our hand. Then we play the Eccentric uh, Apprentice. It's a three mana uh, flyer that when it ETBs, we venture into the dungeon. And at the beginning of the combat, each turn, if we complete a dungeon, um, up to one target creature becomes a bird with base power and toughness 1-1 one, one, and has flying. Then we're playing Five Will Caretaker, a five mana, three, four. Then when the ETBs, we take the initiative. And at the beginning of our end step, if we still have the initiative, we will create a one, one blue fairy creature token with flying. We play the Paladin because when the ETBs, we take initiative. We play uh, Grazalak um, because whenever a creature we control becomes blocked, we may return it to its owner's hand, and then whenever one or more creatures deal combat damage to a player, we draw a card. Guardian of Gerper, it's a 3-mana, three 3-3 three, three with flying, that when it ETBs, we can exile up to one target creature or an artifact, and then return it to the battlefield at the end of our controller's, at the end of its controller's end step. So this allows us to um, have more blink abilities for our creatures. Then we play Emoen, it's 3-mana, uh, 2-3 with War 2, the beginning of our end step. If we have the initiative, we draw a card. And then we will draw another card if we completed a dungeon. We play Inspiring Overseer, most, mostly for the life gain and the draw ability. Uh, Midnight Pathlighter is played because it can only be blocked by legendary creatures. And then whenever one or more creatures deal combat damage to a player, we venture into the dungeon. Moldrifter is in here to draw us two cards. Um, we could hard cast it for five, or we can evoke it for three. But if we do evoke it, it becomes sacrifice um, when it enters the battlefield, but we still get to draw two cards. Then we play Nadir, because whenever ETBs or attacks, we venture, and then it pumps our all of our creatures as long as we've completed a dungeon. Then we play OG the Exquisite Blade, is a four mana spell that when it ETBs, we gain two life, then scry two. And whenever we cast um, our second spell each turn, we can exile up to one target creature, then return it to the battlefield under the owner's control. Then we're playing Planner Alley. It's a 5-mana 3-3 that whenever it attacks, we venture into the dungeon. Then we play Radiant Solar. It's a 6-mana 3-6 with Flying and Lifelink. Um, when it ETBs or another non-token creature ETBs, we venture into the dungeon. And then we could also discard this from our hand to gain three life and venture into the dungeon. We are playing Ranger's Hawk um, because um, for three mana, we can tap another untapped creature we control to venture into the dungeon. Um, and then we also play Season Dungeoneer. It's a four mana spell, uh, creature spell, that when the ETBs, we take the initiative. 
And then for whatever reason, if we have a cleric, rogue, warrior, wizard that is attacking, it will gain protection from creatures until the end of the turn, and then it explores. Next, we're going to be playing Secret Door. It is a 1-mana 0-4 with Defender that we can pay 5 to venture into the dungeon, and we can only activate as a sorcery. Then we're going to be playing Shortcut Seeker, 4-mana, that whenever it deals combat damage to a player, venture. We play Soul Hoarder, um, because whenever a creature is exiled from the battlefield, we'll put a 1-1 counter on it. And then at the beginning of our end step, we may exile another target cre creature we control and then return it to the battlefield. Thassa has kind of the same ability that at the beginning of our end step, we can exile up to one target creature we control and then return it to the battlefield under our control. And then for four mana, we can tap another creature. Tomb of the Horrors, because whenever ETBs, we take the initiative. And then whenever we cast our second spell, um, each turn, if we complete a dungeon, we will copy that spell twice instead of just once. Then Ven Veteran Dungeoneer. Four mana spell that when it ETBs, you venture into the dungeon. Then White Plume Adventurer. Whenever it ETBs, you take the initiative. And at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, you may untap a creature control if you com treat it, completed a dungeon. Then we can untap all of our creatures. And then our last creature is the Malison. Two mana that cannot be blocked if it's attacking alone. And if it deals combat damage to a player, we venture. Then for sorceries, we're going to be playing... Um, Vile Duplication, uh, because we can create a token of another creature you control, except this token has flying and isn't legendary. Then we play Late to Dinner, 4 mana to return to our creature from your graveyard to the battlefield, create a food, ponder to let us look at the top three cards of our library, put them back in any order. You may shuffle, and then we draw a card, and then Preordain to scry to then draw a card. As far as, as, far as instants are concerned, we're going to be playing a ton of spells that blink our creatures um and we have a couple counter spells we have some draw spells um for artifacts we're going to be playing the signet the azorius signet lightning grease to protect a certain creature midnight clock to reload our hand and draw seven cards and shuffle our graveyard into our library we're playing Severox tome um, when it etbs we take the initiative and if we do have the initiative um we can add two colorless mana and then for three, we can exile cards from the top of our library until we exile a non-land card. We may cast that card without paying its mana cost, and we can only activate this if we complete the dungeon. They were playing Soul Ring for ramp, Swift Boots for protection, and Talisman of Progress to give us a blue or a white that will do one damage to us. As far as enchantments, we're going to be playing du Dungeon Delver that says uh, Commander Creatures you have own... Um, Commander creatures you own have room abilities of dungeons trigger an additional time. So this is good for our commander because then we're going to get double triggers and we're going to fly through these these dungeons very quickly. Fly just gives an enchanted creature flying and everyone deals combat damage to the player we venture. Ghostly Prisons as a tax enchantment that um, forces your opponent to pay two for each att creature attacking you. Teleportation Circle to blink uh, artifact or creature and then return it to the battlefield at our end step. Thorough investigation. Uh, whenever you attack, you investigate. And then whenever you sacrifice a clue, you venture into the dungeon. Then Underseller Sweep. It's a five-man enchantment that when it ETBs, you take the initiative. And whenever you attack, if you or a player you're attacking has the initiative, you create two 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens that are tapped and attacking. And then our last enchantment is Vesuvian Diplomancy. It's a four-man enchantment that says whenever you cast a spell that target only is a single artifact creature control, create a token that's a copy of that artifact creature, except it's not legendary. So the reason why this card is good, since we have so many uh, blink effects and um, you know blink effects that are uh, instants, we can uh, copy a creature. So we can copy another creature that either ventures or takes the initiative. So we can get a bunch of triggers off of the dungeons and also trigger our commander. As far as lands, um, there's no reason to go over any of these except for maybe uh, Castle Vantress, which for four mana you can scry to. And then one of our other important lands is Home of the Storm Giants. So for seven mana, we can create a seven-seven... Um, 
blue giant creature with war three it's still a land so if we need an extra attacker for whatever reason we can animate this land for six and then have a big old seven seven with war three and then as far as the dungeons we have the dungeon of the mad mage which uh can give you um a bunch of really cool abilities most of the time i think this is probably the dungeon you want to go down instead of the lost mine even though the lost mine is quicker but the Dungeon of the Mad Mage has a bunch of good abilities in here. Um, the first ability allows you to gain a life, then you scry one. Then you can decide to either create a treasure or go the other direction um, to make a target creature unable to attack you until your next turn. Uh, loss level, you can scry two. Then you can choose whether or not to exile the top two cards of your library and play them. Or you can make two 1-1 uh, two Black Skeleton Creature Tokens. Deep Minds, you scry three, and then the big payoff is Mad Wizard's Lair, where you draw three, reveal them. You may um, put one of them onto the battlefield without paying its mana cost. Not put it on the battlefield, we may cast. And then for the Undercity, um, when you take the initiative, uh, you can search for a land, reveal it, put it into your hand, and shuffle. Then you can either exile, you can either put two 1 1 counters on a target creature, or you can scry two. Um, and then you decide whether or not you're going to go to the arena to go to creature or force someone to lose life or create a treasure. Then you can draw a card or create a skeleton. And then finally, you reveal the top cards to your library. The top 10, sorry. You put a creature card from among them onto the battlefield. It gets three 1 1 counters. It gains hexproof into your next turn. And then you shuffle. So that's the deck. The deck is a lot cheaper than some of the other decks that I've built. Um, we curve out at three, uh, and then 54% of our permanents are blue, and 46 are white, and 11% are colorless. So, that's it, and like I said, this deck is a lot cheaper than the other ones I built. This is going to cost you around 130 so it looks like a ton of fun. Hopefully, I get to play test it tonight or tomorrow. Uh, the video will be uploaded to YouTube shortly. If you like this style of content, please subscribe to my channel. And all my social media links will be in the description for the video. Have a good night and take care.